Okay, but number nine is gonna be a problem where you have to use the vertex formula to either find the min or a max. So the, the one that I'm gonna do here for part A has a uh, fencing uh, type problem, but make sure you know how to do the other variations on the sample test as well. It might be where you don't have to come up with the formula itself, they may just give you the formula and then you just apply the vertex formula directly from that. So you may not have to do any kind of setup with this Depends on what kind of problem is given. So make sure you understand how to do the other variations on the sample tests as well as those problems I suggested for the review problems. Okay, so we have 6,000 feet of fencing. We're enclosing this and they give you that particular shape. Uh, and so we wanna find out what, what is the maximum area that can be enclosed if we're given 6,000 feet of fencing. First thing we're gonna do, label our picture because that's gonna help us know what the formulas are gonna be. The short distances, I'm gonna call those X, and the longer distances here, I'm gonna call that the Y. Do I have to do it only that way? No, you could switch this around. You could put X's going the long way and Y going vertically. If you wanna use length and width, that's fine. I'm gonna use X's and Y's because our formula for vertex has X's and Y's in it. That's why I'm gonna do that instead of L's and W's. Sometimes people get confused if you change it over, that's why I'm gonna use X's and Y's. All right, now here's the two formulas that we're gonna use. The first one is, of course, gonna be area because it's asking me for what the maximum area that can be enclosed. The other one is gonna to have to involve the 6,000 feet of fencing. I need to add up all of the variables that I see there and all that should add up to 6,000. What do I have here? I have three X's plus two Y's equals 6,000. Now in the previous exams I've given when I have these sample tests, I see people actually putting the same exact thing down, 3x and 2y. It's not always going to be 3x plus 2y. It depends on the picture that you have there. So you can't just simply put that down for every single problem whenever you see a fencing problem. It has to do with the drawing itself. That's why it's very important to label your drawing with the variables there, so that way you get the correct equation. So for this particular problem, it's 3x plus 2y, but maybe not necessary on the other ones. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we need to solve for either x or y. So I'm gonna solve for y, so that way we get an equation that's all in terms of x, so it makes it easier when we do our vertex formula. Uh, but you could solve for either one, doesn't matter. So uh, if I solve for y, I'll do 2y equals 6,000 minus 3x. Then divide everything by two, and I'll get 3,000 minus 3 halves x. I'm gonna take this and put it into here. So this y will go into the y right there. We're replacing the y, that way we get all one variable. So take out the y, we put in 3,000 minus 3 halves x. So this goes in right in there. We're gonna multiply this out and we get 3,000x minus 3 halves x squared. This is the equation that you're now gonna use with the vertex formula. So the vertex formula would be the negative b over 2a. We're gonna use this formula. x is equal to negative b over 2a. We'll give you the x value of your vertex. And then when you plug this into the a value there, you'll get the area itself. So what is this asking for? It's asking for what dimensions uh, produce the maximum closed area and what is the maximum area, so asking for both. So we're gonna have to find X and Y and we'll multiply those together to get the area. Let's do the, this one first. We're gonna do X is equal to negative B over 2A. That's the, the B is the number in front of the non-squared variable. The A is always in front of the squared variable. So make sure you don't get those confused. A is always in front of the X squared. So we're gonna do negative 3,000 divided by two times negative three halves. Okay, make sure you use the negative with that as well. Okay. The negatives are gonna cancel, the twos are gonna cancel, and you get 3,000 over three, which will give you 1,000. Now, the next thing you can do is you can put that into here, and then you can find out what the Y value is. So if I do that, I have y is equal to 3,000 minus 3 halves times 1,000. So I'm putting that into this formula right here. 
uh, when I multiply that out, I'll get 3,000 minus 1,500. I'm going to get 1,500 for the answer. So what I would put here is uh, for the answers, so first it asks you for dimensions. Dimensions I would put here, if I can draw this straight line here, I'm going to do 1,000 and 1,500. So I'm going to put 1,000 and then comma 1,500. You can just separate them with a comma. It doesn't matter which one comes first. So as long as we have both those number, numbers there, that's fine. Now the other one asks you for the maximum area. All you're going to do is multiply these two numbers together because originally we had area is equal to x times y. So if I multiply those together, I get a 15 with five zeros after it. So this right here will be uh, my maximum enclosed area. The units on that would be, uh, all these were in terms of feet, which means that this would be square feet. And of course, each of these are going to be uh, in terms of feet. And so we get uh, 1.5 million square feet. That's how much uh, would be the maximum area that can be enclosed if we have 6,000 feet of fencing put into that shape.